I would like to end my lecture by talking for a few minutes about the anti-Mormon theory that Joseph Smith's account of the coming forth of the Book of Mormon evolved over time. The words of 19th century critic Parley Chase are representative of this view. He stated in an 1833 affidavit that in regard to their gold Bible speculation, the Smith family scarcely ever told two stories alike. The credibility of the revision theory is seriously damaged by the very documents that anti-Mormons have used to construct it. On the timeline that is now on the screen, I have plotted out some of the non-Mormon documents that recite what Joseph Smith Jr. and his close associates said about the coming forth of the Book of Mormon between June of 1827 and the year 1830. If anyone will put forth the effort to carefully examine the content of these non-Mormon documents, they will see a very interesting pattern emerge. They will see a relatively complete version of the story that Joseph Smith recorded in 1838 and published in 1842. In other words, these non-Mormon documents preserve and confirm the traditional LDS version of events. As an example, I will read you a summary of things that Joseph Smith reportedly said to non-Mormons between 1st of September and 31st of December, 1827. An angel told Joseph where he could procure a set of gold plates. The plates were concealed in a hill south of Palmyra, New York. The plates had beautiful engravings on them. The plates were a record of an ancient people. Joseph found a big pair of spectacles with the plates. In the fore part of 1827, Joseph said he expected to obtain the gold plates soon, and he tried to obtain a chest to store them in. Joseph took his wife at night in the early morning hours to the hill where the plates were hidden. They went to their destination in a one-horse wagon. As Joseph was bringing the plates to his home, somebody tried to take them from him. He knocked down this person and got away, but had several other skirmishes as he continued on his journey. Joseph was severely bruised by one of his attackers. When he finally made it to his home, he was much fatigued. When Joseph moved from Palmyra, New York to Harmony, Pennsylvania, at the end of 1827, he hid the plates in a barrel of beans in order to prevent them from being discovered. Does any of this sound familiar to you? It certainly does to me. If we had sufficient time, we could examine the content of numerous other non-Mormon documents, and we would be able to see the unmistakable elements of Joseph Smith's published history woven throughout each of them. And then, we could explore the content of these pro-Mormon documents, and we would see that Joseph Smith told the very same story to everyone about how the Book of Mormon came forth. We would also be able to see how non-believers added foreign elements to the prophet's story through misremembrance, exaggeration, the perpetuation of rumor, and outright fabrication. I believe that the information contained in all of these documents will go a long way in dispelling the myth that Joseph Smith revised his account about the coming forth of the golden plates, and so I have decided to turn the research that I have done on this topic into a publishable paper. In closing, let me refer once again to the story about Satan appearing in the church. Almost everybody abandoned the building in a state of terror when the adversary appeared, but one man stayed firmly planted in his seat. He was not troubled by the situation that he was faced with because his personal experience had given him a different perspective than the others. It is my hope that all Latter-day Saints will become like this man. I hope that everyone will take the opportunity to study the history of the church and also the life of the leading prophet of the last days so that if they ever find themselves in a room filled with adversarial questions and comments, their testimony will not be tattered and they will not be moved. Instead, they will have the ability to defend their faith because they will have learned how to tell the difference between what is historical and what is hysterical.